Hi everyone! Welcome to the second part of my review of the art supplies which I used in my colorings. In this part I will tell you about my paints. And here I have my first set of watercolor paints, which I received from my grandfather when I was a child, so it was long ago. Believe me, it's a very old set. I used it when I was small, then I stopped to paint, and when four years ago I started to be interested in coloring, I realized that I can use my old set of watercolors, because I knew that they were of nice quality. They are manufactured by White Knights, it's a Russian brand with quite old story from the uh, uh, 50s of the 20th century, so it's a long history and even now they have very good reputation and I consider their paints a very nice professional quality and the good thing is that they are easily available here in Ukraine. So when I started to be interested in coloring, I gradually started to add new colors to my old set. So the box is old and many of the paints here in these two rows are from my original a very old set and then I started to add new colors. First I filled in this box, then I started to add paints by White Knights to my other boxes where there was space. But still I was unable to stop purchasing them and now I need another box and still I have white knights here in the three rows. Again all of them are white knights. I try to keep my paints organized. <laughs> first I try to organize them according to colors but when my first box was filled in I already was used where each paint was located so I decided that I won't be reorganizing them when I added new greens or new blue colors. So now I have these color swatches for this box. When I do color swatches I always try to mention name of the paint and also all pigments. Because um, first of all it's important when you do mixes, but the other important thing when I started to purchase paints from other brands, I have discovered that pigments with different names from various brands can have the same pigments, so it's important not only compare name of the paint, but also pigment inside before you actually purchase your new colors. And apart from this, I have additional color swatches for some of the colors which are here in the second box. I am very pleased that during the last two years first White Knights added a lot of one pigment colors and I do love them, a lot of beautiful uh, yellow colors from cold yellows to warm yellows, interesting red colors couple of my most loved blue colors like Indothrian Blue and Blue Lake. You can see the one is warmer and one is colder. And recently they started to make collection of the pastel colors. All of these colors have a white inside of them, so they are not fully transparent. They are more semi-opaque. And if you follow my recent colorings where I use these paints for backgrounds mostly, you may discover that this semi-opaque paint, they are even easier to work on the backgrounds, they create a lesser amount of stains even on thin paper, so I am glad that I started to purchase them also. Of course, the full collection of White Knights is much bigger comparing to what I own, but I know that even now I have excessive amount of paints. 
I think that one reason is that each time when I wasn't very successful in painting, in coloring with watercolors, I tried to tell myself that I simply need some new color and it will help me to get the result which I want to uh, reach. I know that it's not true, that it was total deception of myself. And the second reason was that when I go to the art store, I simply want to purchase something and you think that just one small pen of watercolors, it always can be helpful and they are all pretty, so pretty, they are like sweets and I love to unwrap them, you know, that it's very pleasant when you unwrap your new paints, so that's why now I have such a huge collection of white knights. And I can't promise that I won't be purchasing new colors, especially because white knights, they still add new and new interesting paints to their collection. And maybe those paints, they are not very suitable for actual uh, painters, because they have a lot of white in them. But for us, for colorists, I consider them very helpful. But let's move to my second brand. It's uh, uh, White Knights, they are considered of professional quality. My next set is by Winsor & Newton, by its Quartman line, which are student grade. And these two rows, apart from this one, uh, instead of this there were a white paint which I don't know how to use, it was totally unhelpful, it didn't mix well with paint, so I deleted it and I put um, its a raw sienna color which I found very helpful. So I have purchased this set when I was in Paris and somehow I decided that I want to make travel sketches. It's ridiculous and of course my travel sketches they looked awful but at least now I own this set as a souvenir from Paris and I have purchased this set together with my first coloring book. You may remember that my first coloring book was about Paris and I purchased it as a souvenir and that was my start of my coloring journey, so that book and this set of paints. I can't say that I love them. Mm, let me try and find their colors for you. Sorry guys, I was sure that I have prepared all swatches, but now I totally can't find swatches for the Cotman's. But what can I say? I don't like them because comparing to all my other paints, they look more muted. They have a lot of pigment, they mix nicely, but still, when I compare them to other paints, I simply can't get the same brightness from them and I can't say that I am in love with their selection of colors, so it's quite average set and probably my least frequently used now. I simply I use it as a box for additional space and only from time to time I use something from green colors or from blue and brown colors. So. Let's move to another brand, which is also a student grade, but which I prefer much more comparing to Cotman's, and it's a Van Gogh by Royal Talents. Here are all my Van Gogh paints, which I currently own. Good thing is that they are available both in full uh, tubes and also in half paints. I don't think that with my amount of coloring I need any full tubes, so I tend to purchase them in half pens, and here I have them. In a row they look quite cute. First 
I started to purchase them when I discovered that some of the painters use this Naples yellow red light as a main color for the fair skin. I found it very helpful that I don't need to mix uh, anything that I can use this paint as a base and I can mix this paint to a little bit of pink, a little bit of brown to get additional uh, colors of the skin and then gradually I started to build my collection. I added some of the nice blue colors, I love their violet. I can't say that I love their greens, at least those which I own. Only one of them looks natural, other greens I need to mix a little bit with brown to make them look more realistic. But I love yellows which I own. So, maybe I will extend my collection of these colors. I love this Davy Gray, maybe it's not very spectacular on the, pa on the paper, but I consider it very helpful if you need to color castles, buildings, stones. And of course, I am totally in love with their dusk collection. For now, I all own only dusk pink. And I also have Oxide Black, which you can use for mixes with other paints and in such way to create similar granulating colors. If you are not familiar with their Dusk range, it's granulating paint, which you can apply to the paper and there will be beautiful stains of the main color and of black, so they are quite dark and in the same time they are beautiful color. They are also, there were available yellow dusk, green dusk, purple probably, so I don't know, I think that I will purchase them, but mm, now they are simply not available in my local store and I don't want to go somewhere in other stores again because of our lockdown. I love these paints, they are bright, nice, transparent. Sorry for the noises. So, if you have in your art stores Royal Talents Van Gogh, don't uh, look at that, that they are student grade. For my opinion, they are very nice for us colorists. Of course, their professional range of Rembrandt paints are better, but they are also much more pricey. And these paints, they, are, they have quite a reasonable price. So I can recommend them if they are available in your art stores. Next, let's move to my other box and it's watercolors manufactured by Ukrainian brand Arosa. Very fortunately we have this Ukrainian manufacturer which now produce watercolor paints, acrylic paints, oil-based paints, various boxes, brushes and of as they are local manufacturer price is quite reasonable and you know I am quite happy with their quality. I don't know how they are comparing to other professional brands. I don't have um, any skills to compare them with white knights. For my uh, beginner skills, they are quite good. And I am happy that for the, for the relatively small price, I can get nice colors. Of course, their range of colors is smaller comparing to white knights or other brands, but still I have my favorites. Let me show you first all the colors which I currently own. I hope that you can see that they are quite bright. Maybe even excessively bright and it's uh, one of the problems of the real artist with these paints, but for me it's good that they are bright. I do love some of their paints. I love this cobalt turquoise, very helpful color, both as an individual color and in mixes. I love this Quinacridone Gold, I used it a lot when I did my recent painting of autumn leaves. You can get 
various colors from orange brown to the pastel yellow from just one paint according to the amount of, of water you add. I love their quinacridone and violet colors. I love their olive green much more comparing to the white knights olive greens and I quite frequently use their brown colors. So for me they are quite good. I don't have any complaints. Here is my current set. It's completely full, so if there will add some new interesting color which I will purchase, then I will need to purchase a new box. But I am glad that I already have such a nice collection. But I'm sorry that it's a little bit untidy. I usually forget to clean my palettes. I do it only before I start new painting, new coloring. And finally, let me show you my last uh, watercolors, which I own. I have one Senelier. I purchased it because of this very interesting color. It's called greenish amber. It's a very muted green. I consider it similar to moss green, at least for myself. And again, it's very helpful when you need to paint stones or buildings. I simply love this color. And then I have several of Daniel Smith watercolors. Of course, I tend to try to purchase those colors which are famous for their granulating. I hope that you can see this interesting effect of the moon glow paint or of the lunar blue. And also Cascade Green has a mix of blue and golden. So they are, of course, of very high quality, but price also is very high, so it's difficult to add many colors to your collection. And I consider that I already have a lot of interesting paints. Of course, maybe later I will add some new interesting granulating colors, but for now I am quite happy and I think that I definitely simply need to use more of these paints for the backgrounds in my coloring books. But I did use them, I did backgrounds, especially during Halloween time previous year, I did a couple of backgrounds in Escape to Oz. Uh, it was a page with, one page with was uh, with crows and the other with spiders, so they look mm, a little bit spooky and background in such colors, it was very helpful. With just one paint I got very interesting, intricate background. Now let's move from my regular paints to my pearlescent and metal of watercolor paints. Oh no, we won't be moving to pearlescent watercolor paints yet because I forgot to show you my very small collection of uh, Ecoline paints. Again, they are by Royal Talents. They are liquid watercolors and if you follow my channel, you may see these two paints, Ultramarine Violet and Pastel Violet, when I used them for the background in Botanicum Autumn Girl, which I did in October. So that's how they look. These bottles, it's an old design, now they have more intricate design with a different shape of cap, maybe uh, more uh, convenient to use, but I purchased what I have in my local store, there is no my choice now. And I have three colors, but as I am expecting a delivery from Jackson's Art and there will be two new colors for me, I hope that when it will arrive and that <laughs> at least it will arrive, then I will show you which other colors I have purchased. I love them. They are synthetic and because of this they are excessively bright and very transparent. I would say that on the 
thin paper they behave even better comparing to regular watercolors. Maybe because they are already liquid and you don't need to add additional water, so you can get the plain cover on the whole page. You know, when you add water, you can add a little bit more of water, a little bit less. So on one page you get a, a more intense and a less intense color because you can't calculate amount of water which you, you use with a regular solid watercolor. But when you use liquid, you can get a very plain and a very nice coverage. So I was quite contented when I used them in Botanicum and now I definitely think that I need more colors and that I need to experiment with them more. I also have some of these Ecolines in uh, water-based markers. They have uh, the same pigment, the same liquid inside of them, but about my markers I will tell you in the third final part of my review. And now finally let's move to the Perlachant and Metal of Watercolors. My first two sets of Perlachant and Metal Watercolors were gifted to me. My first set was by Colero and I still consider is this as a, one of the best sets. I would say that even this one set would be completely enough for me because here it has a very nice perlescent watercolors. Here I have swatches but maybe they are not very visible now. But I think that you are familiar with this set. And I love that here I have a blue pearl, green pearl, a pink pearl and they mix very nicely with regular watercolors and you're able to create interesting effects. I can use them sprinkling them on top of the regular watercolors or I can mix them one while regular watercolors are still wet. So you can use them in different ways. But they also have this quite nice metal watercolors, beautiful. And as I said, even this set would be quite enough for me, but I was very spoiled and I also was gifted two other beautiful sets. This one is by Kuritake Gansai Tambi. A lot of nice golden colors. I love all of them, they are very helpful. I would say that on paper they create quite bright and opaque layer. Sometimes they are even able to, ma uh, to mask black lines. If you want to, you can watch my videos from Spirit Animal, which I did in October and in September. There I used a lot of this uh, golden paints because there I had to color um, sigils and magical signs using various shades of gold and there you can see how shiny they are. And all of these perlescent watercolors they are very economical. I use them a lot and they still look almost full. So it's also a very nice set. Very highly pigmented so I'm very happy to have it. My next set, another wonderful gift. I swatched here and I hope that you can see how shiny they are. They are by Fine Tech. Sorry. Again, very economical. They are so huge and you need only small amount of them. Colors are very intense and very highly pigmented. But of course, when you purchase uh, these paints, you need to remember that it's uh, very difficult to use them alone. On the white paper, probably they won't be looking very beautiful, very spectacular. I do my swatches on black pay paper, so on the black paper they look much better comparing to what they are able to do on the white paper. When you use them in coloring book, you can consider 
use them on black paper like pictures in Maria Trolle or you can do your own black background using acrylic paint first you need uh, not watercolor but acrylic first which will be dried completely and became uh, or as a nice nice base for this paint sometimes I also mix them with regular watercolors so you just don't have to expect them to behave nicely on white paper because I got some complaints from some of the viewers that they don't know how to use them they tried them for backgrounds and colors wasn't very similar to what they have in the pens and probably if you want to use some pearlescent paints as uh, individual colors for the background you need to look for the pearlescent and metal acrylic or pearlescent and pearl and metal uh, gouache paints which are opaque but watercolors they are transparent so either they need to be mixed with regular watercolors or they have to be applied on top of the dark backgrounds I use them a lot on top of neo colors also and I love difference of textures you know that neo colors or regular watercolors after drying they create a matte surface matte texture and when you add on top of it this bright shining pearlescent paint it looks very nice If you want to experiment with these pearlescent watercolors, if you want to use them in your coloring books, I would highly recommend to purchase some opaque uh, acrylic paints. Why acrylic? It's because after drying they became permanent, so you want you will be able to add another uh, water-based mediums on top of them, maybe in black color or dark blue color, and first you use this paint as a base and then on top of it all your pearlescent watercolors will look much better so also I have purchased several colors individually you can see them here in this column or in this box but what can I say I would say that it's already excessive because here they look very nice but these colors on the white paper they look totally terrible like dirt but i gradually start to use them more for backgrounds and it's nice to have this interesting blue and green colors uh, you may notice how i use them during my halloween painting it was very helpful there to have such a bright colors i think that it's enough for me i don't intend to extend my fine collection but I am looking at Perlescent Turner gouache as I said I hope that gouache which is opaque will be able to work better on white paper so I am very interested in their Perlescent and other in other colors with similar effects I have things that they have some dark chrome paints and metal paints so maybe with my next purchase i will try to purchase some of these interesting colors of course they um only if they if you love to do this kind of background but it can be very helpful very spectacular in many books like hannah carlson like kerbera zanes i don't know any uh, Selena Fennig book if you find a way how to apply watercolors there but sometimes it's really nice to have something shiny on your page even if I sometimes I forget that I can use them and I do simple regular watercolor background but enough bubbling and let's move to my other paint because I noticed that I already started to bubble again Well, after a couple of moments of thinking, I decided that probably I will show you my acrylic and gouache paints in the third final part and in the end of this video I want to show you my brushes which I use for watercolors. 
My most frequently used brushes are quill brushes from Jackson's Art. Probably you can see them in each and every of my videos. I started to use this quill brush with ink tens also. The main reason why I love them is because they are able to keep this nice thin tip. They are able to hold nice amount of water, so it's very convenient to work with watercolor paints. They are synthetic brushes and I much more prefer synthetic brushes rather they are made from natural squirrel, for example. First of all, I care about squirrels and also I consider brushes made with squirrels, they are softer, they hold even bigger amount of water, they are more difficult to control. You know that water is crucial factor when you color in books where paper is far from excellent, where paper is thin, so you can't use a lot of water. So synthetic brushes are much more easier to use. I also have this flat brush for the backgrounds. All of them are by Jackson's Art. Other brushes which I can recommend are these two. The first one I purchased in a local art store, but you can find something similar in any other brand. Size is 00, zero or sometimes it's even 30 and it's very helpful when you need to draw four or when you need mask black lines using acrylic or gouache paints, so very helpful brush. And the other type is this one also very thin and able to create beautiful thin lines also helpful for hair, for fur and for grass texture. Again, it's by Jackson's Art. Other brushes which I use from time to time when I need to create texture of hair and fur is this Filbert Grainer brushes and they have a very interesting shape. I hope that you can see it. I don't think that you need all of them, but at least one in size like this one, it's a one four. I would recommend to have. For me, it was a very helpful when I started to do fur and hair with watercolors. So it was the end of my part two of my art supplies review. I hope that I didn't make any huge grammar mistakes. I hope to see you in the third part where I will show you my remaining art supplies, my acrylic and gouache paints, my pens, small collection of markers and so on. I hope that you all are well and safe. I know that now lockdown in many countries again is quite strict. So I hope that you will still optimistic at your homes and you will still will be safe. Continue coloring. I hope to see you in the next part. And I hope that weather where you live still is quite mild and good. At least we have quite dry weather, it's unusual for November and I am very grateful that we still don't have any heavy rains and I think that it's a nice sign. Thanks for watching and until the next video.